Hello everyone, I am Angela Cannon. I am the Environmental Education Coordinator with Rochester Museum and Science Center's Coming Nature Center. And today I am here to read you a story. This story is The Legend of the Indian Paintbrush, retold and illustrated by Tommy D. Paola. The Legend of the Indian Paintbrush. Many years ago, when the people traveled the plains and lived in a circle of teepees, there was a boy who was smaller than the rest of the children of the tribe. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't keep up with the other boys who were always riding, running, shooting their bows, and wrestling to prove their strength. Sometimes his mother and father worried for him. But the boy, who was called Little Gopher, was not without a gift of his own. From an early age, he made toy warriors from scraps of leather and pieces of wood, and he loved to decorate smooth stones with the red juices from berries he found in the hills. The wise shaman of the tribe understood that little gopher had a gift that was special. Do not struggle, little gopher. Your path will not be the same as others. They will grow up to be warriors. Your place among the people will be remembered for a different reason. And in a few years, when Little Gopher was older, he went out to the hills alone to think about becoming a man, for this was the custom of the tribe. And it was there that a dream vision came to him. The sky filled with clouds, and out of them came a young Indian maiden and an old grandfather. She carried a rolled up animal skin, and he carried a brush made of fine animal hairs and pots of paints. The grandfather spoke. My son, these are the tools by which you shall become great among your people. You will paint pictures of the deeds of the warriors and the visions of the shaman, and the people shall see them and remember you forever. I'll come closer with this picture so you can see, because it's in black and white. The maiden unrolled a pure white buckskin and placed it on the ground. Find a buckskin as white as this, she said. Keep it and one day you will paint a picture that is as pure as the colors in the evening sky. And as she finished speaking, the clouds cleared and a sunset of great beauty filled the sky. Little Gopher looked at the white buckskin and on it he saw colors as bright and beautiful as those made in the setting sun. Then the sun slowly sank behind the hills. The sky grew dark and the dream vision was over. The little gopher returned to the circle of his people. The next day, he began to make soft brushes from the hairs of different animals and stiff brushes from the hairs of horses' tails. He gathered berries and flowers and rocks of different colors and crushed them to make his paints. He collected the skins of animals which the warriors brought home from their hunts. He stretched the skins on wooden frames and pulled them until they were tight. And he began to paint pictures of great hunts, of good deeds, of great dream visions, so that the people would always remember. But even as he painted, Little Gopher sometimes longed to put aside his brushes and ride out with the other warriors. But always he remembered his dream vision and he did not go with them. Many months ago, he had found his pure white buckskin, but it remained empty because he could not find the colors of the sunset. He used the brightest flowers, the reddest berries and the deepest purples from the rocks and still his paintings never satisfied him. They looked dull and dark. He began to go the, to the top of a hill each evening and look at the colors that filled the sky and to try to understand how to make them. He longed to share the beauty of his dream vision with the people. 
but he never gave up trying. And every morning when he awoke, he took out his brushes and his pots of paints and created the stories of the people with the tools that he had. One night as he lay awake, he heard a voice calling to him. Because you have been faithful to the people and true to your gift, you shall find the colors you are seeking. Tomorrow, take the white buckskin and go to the place where you watch the sun in the evening. There on the ground, you will find what you need. The next evening, as the sun began to go down, little gopher put aside his brushes and went to the top of a hill. As the colors of the sunset spread across the sky, and there on the ground all around him were brushes filled with paint, each one a color of the sunset. Little Gopher began to paint quickly and surely, using one brush and then another. And as the colors in the sky began to fade, Little Gopher gazed at the white buckskin and he was happy. He had found the colors of the sunset. He carried his painting down to the circle of the people, leaving the brushes on the hillside. And the next day, when the people awoke, the hill was ablaze with color, for the brushes had taken root in the earth and multiplied into plants of brilliant reds, oranges, and yellows. And every spring from that time, the hills and meadows burst into bloom. And every spring, the people danced and sang the praises of Little Gopher who had painted for the people. And the people no longer called him Little Gopher, but he who brought the sunset to earth. And that is the story of the legend of the Indian paintbrush. You may find some plants around here um, that are sometimes called Indian paintbrush. They're actually um, a hawkweed. Um, and not quite the same species, but they do remind one of the beautiful colors of the sunset um, if they were put on a flower. So with that, um, I hope you will enjoy learning a little bit more about how to make earth paints in um, the video with Rose. So thanks for coming. Goodbye, everybody. Today, I am out here in the creek because we're gonna be getting pretty friendly with some rocks or some of the most ancient beings on earth and humans have a really, really strong connection that helps root us. So rocks are some of the most ancient beings on this earth. And I know it might seem a little bit silly to think about it as a being, as something that's alive because we often just see rocks as rocks and um, sort of inanimate but if you think about them on a broader time scale, if you look at geological time, rocks are moving, they're changing, they're breaking up, they're forming. This creek is adding layers and layers of sediment right now, and it may not look like anything is happening, but we're watching rocks grow. Um, so it's kind of cool to think of it in that broader time scale. It's something that I have a hard time even imagining. If we go back to the human time scale, people have been doing rock paintings and manipulating rocks and using stone tools for, for as long as we've been people. And so when we're out here and we're looking at the rocks that we're finding, try to think of it as uh, maybe an ancient connection. You're getting to know a part of humanity that you might not have seen or been in touch with before. So there's so many different kinds of rocks and I am certainly not a geologist, but I know that there are three main types of rocks, igneous, metamorphic, sedimentary, and they all are a little bit different. And try to maybe notice, are they different? Do some of the rocks have layers? Are they flat? Are some, you know, maybe they're more red than others. Maybe there's ones that are more gray. Maybe there are some that you can almost just break apart in your hands, or maybe there are some that are really, really tough and it doesn't seem like you would be able to break it apart. Maybe just take some time to do some scouting and get to know the rocks. Also friends, don't be afraid to get your feet wet. Maybe if you're feeling a little bit bold and wanna be really immersive, don't be afraid to get your feet 
a little bit muddy. Studies have shown that walking barefoot, being in contact with the dirt can actually help you feel better. So going back to and thinking about stone tools and how some rocks are much harder than other rocks and we're going to be breaking down these rocks and creating a powder from them that we're going to use for our painting and for our pigments. So while you're out exploring and looking for different rocks, consider the densities of the rocks. Do they break apart easily? If so, it's going to be much easier to make them into a malleable powder that we can paint with and try to find a nice variety of color that really represents the land. Gonna grab a gray rock, nice reddish looking rock. This pile of rocks caught my eye. A lot of nice browns. And this one's kind of cool. Got a bunch of holes in it, wonder why. This one is really, really dark. Look at this really, really red one. I'm right here in the stream bed, and it's a great spot to look for deposits of clay. And don't be afraid to grab some of that too. It's gonna make a really nice pigment. Some of it's got a reddish color, but clay can be pretty variable. Pretty cool part about using natural pigments and rocks is that the colors that we're getting are really gonna embody literally the land. They're going to represent um, the unique combination of colors and minerals and clay and whatever else is in the soil and in the ground that is specific to this area in particular. We're we'll working on grinding the rocks that we gathered into a powder and there's two ways that we can do this. Um, if you have a hammer, which I brought along with me, makes it pretty pretty quick and I'm just gonna maybe find a flat rock to smash against and being careful to try to collect that powder. If you don't have a hammer, just find a rock. Like I said, they come in different densities. Find a nice, dense, hard rock that's not gonna crumble and use that as your smasher. Oh, next up is this reddish rock. Doesn't look like gonna break very easily it just looks really dense and maybe a little crystally so I think I'm gonna leave this one alone put it back bedrock number two here's the final result of all my rock smashing probably smashed about five or six different rocks and looks like we have a nice range from brown to reddish grayish, orange, uh, more, more uh, kind of gray colors. Just looking at the stream bed, it kind of all looks pretty monotone or the same color, but when you take the individual pieces out and break them down, they do really have a nice range of color and so you can kind of start to realize that maybe brown isn't just brown, but maybe there's dark brown and red brown and orange brown and gray brown and there's a lot of tone and depth to, to the earthy colors that we've got going on here. The other thing I brought with me, uh, I got some watercolor paper, and I also brought a paintbrush. If you don't have a paintbrush, try to make up your own, find one in nature, use a twig. Um, but I'm gonna dip my paintbrush just right here in the stream and get some of my powder wet, and I'll show you that process in just a moment. So while we're out here in the forest and we're getting our hands dirty and we're connecting to the rocks and maybe thinking on geological time, and maybe thinking back to how our ancestors maybe did something similar. Um, I wanna encourage everyone to paint your own story, use your own designs, don't look to um, indigenous rock paintings and things of that nature and copy those ideas. We want it to really be original and be our own and we don't want to culturally appropriate those designs and those images because they really aren't ours to take. So I'm cheating a bit and I'm gonna use this cup because it's difficult to get the water directly from the creek. And I'm just gonna add some water to it a little bit at a time and to the other colors as well. Try not to add too much. You're gonna dip your paintbrush in and 
have at it. Well, for my picture, I decided to base it off of a song that's been stuck in my head, and one of the lines is, flow the river, flow into the sea. And I think that was perfect because the stream that I'm sitting at right now will eventually make its way um, off to the sea. And so you can see there's a lot of different shades of um, red and brown and gray. Um, but they're, they're distinct and they have depth in a way that is really unique to this specific place and this little piece of land. And this color combination um, is found and held in these rocks and in the soil. And I want everyone to just maybe take a minute to think about that while you're out and while you're painting. And I hope that you end up with muddy toes and that you really maybe get to know the earth in a way that you hadn't considered it before and maybe start to slow down a little bit and think in terms of geological time. If you end up doing it, we would love to see it.